What is up? Today's video is going to be on another one of the mailman's cars. This is his Trailblazer. Um, this car needs transmission cooler lines. The I think the lines are rusted and he blew the lines off um, when he was on the highway. And the whole back glass was full of tranny fluid and you know he was very low and tranny fluid did smell a little burned. So you know I don't think it's harmed too bad. What we did in the meantime is uh, put a piece of hose on to bypass the tranny cooler lines just so he could drive it over here. And now that it's here, I'm going to go ahead and jack it up and lay under there and uh, show you guys how to change the transmission cooler lines on a trailblazer. But here's the car. First step is uh, right here, we have a pretty fancy tool. It's a uh, vacuum pump or suction pump here and creates a suction and this little line here goes down into the actual transmission pan and then when you pump this tool over here what happens is it creates a suction and that sucks the transmission fluid out so that way when you're pumping this guy here and you take the transmission pan off of the bottom of the car you don't actually have all the tranny fluid going everywhere so you just got to give it a few pumps and then we'll, uh, we'll let it go. So it's going to take all the fluid out of the pan here. You may or may not be able, oh yeah, you can definitely see it rushing through. So this is pretty cool. It's an effective way to drain the transmission. So yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jack it up because we're uh, getting most of the fluid out right now. So we're under the car now, and our next step after we've uh, jacked it up with jack sands and everything is we're going to take off this transmission pan here. And we got a new filter and a uh, tranny service kit. So we are going to take this pan off. And what we're looking for in the bottom of the pan is uh, clutch material or uh, little fine shavings of metal so that we know that we've actually done some damage here because this. Uh, transmission did run pretty low on fluid so when you run something low on fluid you know you're gonna damage stuff and we just want to see if this transmission is still healthy enough to uh, be doing this work on so we're gonna drop that pan and I'm gonna try to angle it in such a way well, I've already sucked most of the fluid out of it but I'd like to suck the rest out so that we make uh, smallest amount of mess in the garage but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take all these uh, pan bolts off so I've got most of the bolts loosened. Um, this is how you'd want to do it, even if you uh, didn't have the sucker. So I got just this one bolt holding in this side. So I'm going to finish unscrewing this one right here. And then once I unscrew this, I have two bolts in the other side that are still holding the whole pan. So once I take this out, um, I'll be able to tip the pan uh, right where I have my drain pan set up here. So it's pretty loose, so then once I come in and, and loosen these with my gun here, the pan's gonna start to tip. And once the pan tips, it's gonna start to tip. So as we back these bolts out, it's gonna tip a little more. So now we can get a good angle on it. And it's being held in by this this piece back here, but you know you don't want to you don't want to get it coming down too violently because you'll spill it. But I'm gonna try to try not to do that. So I did get the transmission pan off of this thing, and looking in here, this black stuff in here, that's clutch material. So. It's not really a good thing. Um, it means he, he definitely shortened the life of this transmission. Um, but it should be okay. We took it for a drive with that little repair that we had, a little temporary repair. And it hit fourth. Typically the 3-4 clutch is what burns out when you run these transmissions low on fluid. So, you know, he was on the highway driving for a while with low fluid, so he definitely did some damage, but, you know, it's, uh, it's likely going to be okay, and hopefully when we get it all back together, he's able to hit uh, fourth gear and everything functions like it should, at least for a little while. Um, 
He's going to buy himself some time, you know. I'm sure it'll last for a while after this, but... Yeah, so definitely some life taken off of the transmission, but I'm going to go ahead and clean this pan out and we're going to change the filter underneath on the valve body of the transmission, so I'll get under there and show you guys what that looks like too. So I got the old gasket off and the pan all cleaned. I cleaned up the magnet that's right there. That comes off and you can scrub that. I use a little bit of brake clean and the pan looks brand new. So we got our new uh, gasket on here. It only goes one way. You got to line up the, uh, the dimple here but I just messed it up, but yeah. So I have a filter that I'm gonna change. Uh, you got this little guy right here. Um, oops. So this will normally stay in the transmission, so if you yank this guy out, you can put the new one in, and then you put your new filter on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the old filter out, put the new one on, and yeah, we're gonna go from there. So I've got the transmission pan back on. I went ahead and put it back on just because um, that was only really to check whether or not we uh, had any damage and to change that filter out. So now that I got that out, I'm gonna move over to the front of the car um, and I'm gonna start taking off the transmission cooler lines. So we are underneath the car here and right here we have the radiator for the transmission cooler um, set up there and right here you can see these lines going in. Um, this line right here and this other line right here and we already popped these uh, plastic clips off but on this line itself here there is a clip and that clip on that line there you have to take off with a pick it's hard to get a good angle on this but see if I can focus all right, so there it is right there, all focused in. Um, there's a clip on there. You may or may not be able to see it, but if you can grab that, I'll show it to you once it's off so it's easier, and uh, pull that clip off, then you can unscrew that right there, and the line will come right out of there. Um, there's gonna be some fluid drippage, so I'm gonna put a pan under here. So I'm gonna do that with that line, and also with this line. And then we should be um, ready to move on to the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Right here is one of those clips that I was talking about. So this guy right here fits around the fitting there and those little uh, inward pointing areas, they clamp the pipe. And the pipe actually just slides out. I think in the last clip I said something about unscrewing, but there's no unscrewing necessary. Um, if you look right here, the pipe just slides right out and uh, you can see the transmission fluid dripping a little bit. Not too much came out, but you can see it still drips every once in a while. But yeah, so that's very easy, not really too bad. Just keep an eye on those clips uh, and know if your kit comes with new clips or not. But I kept both of mine, so we should be all set. Um, now I'm gonna move up to the top of the engine and I'll show you guys uh, what we're gonna do up there. So from up here, uh, we're at the top of the engine. This is the uh, upper radiator hose right here and looking down this way we can see these two lines right here these are the transmission cooler lines up here so what we're going to do is pop those black clips off there um, and undo it or you could do what i'm going to do and cut those lines because we're changing all these lines anyway and i don't want to waste my time sitting there fiddling around with uh, little clips up inside of there plus the car's jacked up so it's hard to get to so i'm just going to see what i have to cut those lines and then we should be able to pull those out and then we have to disconnect them from the transmission. So I stuck my arm in there and I used a die grinder. Uh, maybe not the best idea, I'm not sure the flammability of transmission fluid, but I knew there wasn't too much fluid in the lines and you know, I didn't make any fires, but I cannot guarantee that you won't set your car on fire. So probably try something else or just undo these, but these are often very rusted and these were after messing with it for a little bit I tried to get one of the clips out and it was rusted on there so yep I cut them and now I'm gonna move on to the ones on top of the transmission so I've moved on to the underside of the car uh, after getting those lines off up there you can see our repair right here that was just to uh, be able to drive the car so that's where the line actually rusted um, I assume that's a common spot for these cars but uh, right up here 
you can see that there's a this shield that goes around the pan here. Bent it a little bit to get it off the pan, but there's a 13 right up there. Um, there's two of them actually. Here's another one right near the O2 sensor, and the other one's right here. So I'm going to take off those two 13s. That should drop the shield down, and it should give me a little bit more room to get my arm up in there and mess with these uh, transmission cooler lines, which you can probably see. Yeah, you can see the lines up in there. So those are the lines we got to get to on top of the transmission. It's not going to be easy, but you know, this is a mod moderately difficult uh, job here, just because it's hard to see up in there, and you got to remove those clips without actually being able to see them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to do that. Hopefully we can get it done in a reasonable amount of time. Now that shield is out of our way. I think where we left off was I was taking the lines off of the top of the transmission and telling you guys about the clips on there. Uh, and the best way to actually see it is up and over the top of the transfer case. So uh, when you're looking up under there, the only way you can actually get to like see the clip with your arm in there, because your arm kind of blocks where you're looking. So I'll see if I can get that angle and show you guys up and uh, up under there. But, yeah, so right now I have the lines out there on the ground. All I need to do is put the new lines in. It's a bit easier said than done, but what I'm going to do first is take those clips that I took off and I showed you earlier, and I'm going to put those on first because you can put that on and then you can slide the pipe in. So it's easier to do it like that. Um, but I'm going to go put those clips on, up, uh, on top of the transmission. So see if I can show you guys a good view from over the transfer case. So this is the angle that I'm talking about. It's uh, from the side of the transfer case here. You can see that little that thing that looks like a nut. And it's the same style uh, clip that we took off the radiator in the front. Uh, this is the only angle that you can really see it from. So I'll zoom out here so you guys can see exactly where I am. So you want to be right next to the exhaust here above this little uh, exhaust hanger and uh, to the right of the transfer case and then you can actually see that right there which is your uh, and there's a lower one that's hidden by the flashlight right there but yeah you can just start to see it right there so those are the two lines you have the upper and the lower so I'm gonna go ahead and put the clips on first and then we can go ahead and slide the lines into it and uh, then put our little plastic locks over it and then you know, the trickiest part is probably going to be getting the clips on and then routing the lines. And then we'll move on to putting the lines on in the front. It should be easier. Alright, so I did get the lines routed. Um, I want to point out that this is not a fun job and it's not easy. But the lines go up and uh, they go underneath the side motor mount there. Uh, I had them routed over at first and, you know, things were all messed up. But make sure that you know which line is the upper and which line is the lower. You don't want to get them mixed up because they only really fit right one way. So uh, the part number for the upper, I think, I have the bag over here. 7515 are the last four digits of that part number. So, so 7515 is the upper line. Definitely uh, do that one first snap it in and everything so you don't get it confused and there's a little yellow line on the actual line itself it's like a ring a yellow ring you want to make sure that you can't see that yellow ring you'll feel it snap into place if you have the clip in there correctly and the clip isn't worn out make sure that the clips go on and fit snug if not you may want to bend them closed a little bit um, it's just a lot it's very tedious um, times that you can't see and you really got to just go by feel uh, my hands are nasty because I didn't wear gloves because it's easier to feel the clips without gloves but 
yeah, it's, it's a, not a fun job. So now the lines are routed up in front and we got them right up here. So we are about ready to go ahead and plug these lines in. Um, can't really see them down there, can you? But they're in there. Yeah, there's a glimpse of them. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run the lines from the radiator to there. And then after that, we should be all set with this routing. So I got the lines hooked up there, the two longer lines down to the shorter lines, and those go underneath and to the radiator that is under here. Um, yep, right under there. So we're all set with this thing, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and lower it back onto the ground after getting all my stuff out from underneath and we're going to put some transmission fluid in it. So that's going to be about it for this uh, Chevy Trailblazer and our transmission cooler lines. Um, so what I am going to do right now is start the car, I'm going to take it for a quick drive to get the fluid warmed up, and then I'm going to check the fl uh, fluid level again. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing out of the garage and take it for a quick drive. So hopefully you guys can get a feel for how this thing actually shifts now. There's first. Second. Still takes a while, but I think this thing's just, uh, you know, a little slow. But yeah, definitely better. Better than it was before. The car is fully warmed up now, so that might have something to do with it. But, it seems to be doing okay. So, I'm gonna take it back to the house, check the fluid, and, you know, add some if needed. Remember to always check your transmission fluid while the car's running. Um, yeah, so. Thanks a lot guys, appreciate you watching the video, um, stay tuned for more stuff, I'm sure this car will break again, or uh, you know, more Honda stuff coming up soon, I'm going to be doing the head gasket and changing all my coolant hoses, so stay tuned for that.